Live from the NJ.com studio comes the only weekly TV podcast you'll need, where a lofty critic squares off with an obsessed superfan on everything from highbrow drama to lowbrow reality. The cocktail shaker is ready. Prepare for your TV hangover. Now, your hosts, Vicki Hyman and Aaron Medley. Hello and welcome to TV Hangover, episode 37. I am Erin Medley alongside Vicki Hyman. Vicki, hi everybody. Uh, On today's show, we are going to talk about summer shows, uh, some of the season finales, Game of Thrones, of course, and the return of Wayward Pines. You look thrilled, Vicky. I liked it, but I guess we can talk about it later. I wasn't like, I wasn't bowled over by it, but all right. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at TV Hangover Show, at E underscore meds, and at Vicky High, V I C K I H Y. Um, we also have an email address. It is TV Hangover Show at NJ And didn't we receive an email this week, producer Alyssa? We totally did. Um, who was it from? Don from New Jersey. Don who, who from New Jersey. Me about something, I think. Well, oh no, I recall. <laughs> so Don from New Jersey, whose mother lives in the Lehigh Valley and receives the Express Times. Uh, <laughs> so I know lots of information about Don, uh, and she read one of your columns, Vicky. Oh, good. But Don was our our listener from last week who said that he previously did not like Jon Snow. Mm-hmm. And I asked him why, and he responded, and he basically said it was for all of the reasons you gave, that yeah. he was broody and, you know. Lugubrious. And, yeah. And I and as I said, part of it was not his fault. They just stranded him at, at Castle Black for four episodes last season. Right. <laughs> not a lot to do. Not, not a but lot look to broody. do. At Castle Black. He does well. He does do it well. Uh, Vicky, I feel really nasally today. Um, any particular reason why? Allergies. Allergies. Well, there you go. Pollen. Okay. Pollen is I had heat exhaustion on Monday. What I did, How? I guarded. I gardened for like half an hour and then proceeded to get very sick. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. See, that's why you should stay inside with the air conditioning uh, and watch yeah. TV. Uh, yeah. So I've learned my lesson. Well, clearly. <laughs> um, also, I'm I'm catching up on my ga- Game of Thrones. The Walking Dead is what I meant. I'm four episodes into season six. So far, meh. And you saw Glenn. I did see yes. Glenn, and I understand the controversy, Yes, but I go back to what I've said before, which is if you don't see them die, you can't really believe it, well, although... Which I agree. It's, it was impossible for him to get out of there. It, oh that my God. is what... That's the thing. <laughs> that's Even though you don't actually see him die, there's no blood coming out of his mouth, as mm-hmm. you have seen previously when people get attacked by the zombies and they start eating their intestines. Mm-hmm. Blood starts gurgling out of their mouth, which didn't happen with Glenn, so I didn't think he was dead. However, I say all that to say, it seemed nearly impossible that he would be able to escape this horde of zombies when he's you know sur- I mean surrounded by them yes absolutely completely surrounded by them but I will say also that it was a little cheesy that when the guy whatever his name was um, shot himself yes and fell on to like how oh, that's not how that no, I, I'm sorry no every, every like the entire internet is ahead of you I mean they have like you know re like like taking it frame by frame like there's the no way the guy could have not all in that particular <laughs> no. way they are they are way ahead of you I mean uh, well of course they are because I'm way behind but I just thought the whole thing was a little ridiculous and I also brought up to you how I thought it was ridiculous um how random people in the town like people we've never seen before in Alexandria they just pop up yeah, they're well, just, they're there. We've never seen do them. Do you remember Nikki and Paolo from Lost? Yes, but they <laughs> then they died, and that was okay. Um, all right, so let's get to some TV news. In big, breaking reality TV news. I can't wait to hear. <laughs> the Hills is celebrating its 10th anniversary with a special starring Lauren Conrad. I have never watched an episode of Laguna Beach or The Hills in my entire life. And that is your loss. No, it's not. No, it is, I'm a though. better person for it. You are not. It, you're really not. Let me tell you, The Hills, I think, was really the first reality show that messed with your perception of reality. Because according to everyone on the show, nothing about it was real. Like, the whole thing was staged. Everything but about that's it. that's every reality show. That is show. untrue. No, let me tell you the difference. 
the difference I believe with most reality shows is there are yes storylines and the producers like tell them go to this restaurant and they go there and yeah. they talk about things but I think the things that they talk about are legit Whereas with the Hills, it was different. Like, they're saying like every single thing that happened was scripted by like the producers came up with those storylines. Like I never dated this person. Like mm-hmm. we just said we were dating for the show. That's different. Okay. You don't watch enough reality TV I, to know the difference, so I don't think you can comment accurately. I watch a lot of reality TV shows. So it is. It's different. So did, was it influential in that way? Whereas most reality shows that came after it are like that, or is it an outlier? No, most reality shows that came after it are not like that. I mean, when you watch The Real Housewives of New Jersey, do you have any doubt in your mind that Teresa and Melissa Gorga did not get along for a good period of time? No, I have no doubt in my mind. Okay, so that's the difference with mm-hmm. The Hills. It's like these people. <laughs> Although, We're just although, manufacturing although I, oh, I have always drama. said that Real Housewives of New Jersey seems to be different from a lot of the other Real Housewives um, shows because these are people who actually knew each other and right. had intense relationships before the show started, where it seems to me right. that the other franchises, they are just throwing people together. Well, no, I agree with that. And I do think they throw people together. And I don't think that they hang out outside of mm-hmm. the, the filming of the show. Agreed, 100%. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the case with The Hills. The difference is, even if, let's say, I, I love producer Alyssa, but let's say we 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 were filming a show together. If I didn't like her, that would come across when we were film, filming because I just don't like her anyway, and now we have to well, be that's together. that's clear. Right? Okay. <laughs> the difference on The Hills is, is that we're indifferent toward one another, but because we're on this reality show and the producers need drama, I'm now dating her boyfriend. Mm-hmm. So that's like the difference. Okay. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's what, what is what is this what is this special again? Because so, as soon as you said the hills, my mind just sort of you drifted. went blank. <laughs> yeah. So it's an anniversary special, and Lauren Conrad, who has who many say has eclipsed the show. You know, she has her Lauren Conrad clothing line that's uh, available at Kohl's. I bought her earrings, and Did I get you? lots of compliments on them. I have one of her sweaters <laughs> that says "Ooh La La." It's the pink sweater that I have. Mm-hmm. That's Lauren Conrad. Okay. Um, and so the special airs August 2nd on MTV, uh, and we'll see what she has to say. But they, well, she claims that it will be an honest conversation about what it was really like living with the cameras for so many years, sharing some behind the scenes secrets, and showing some of her so life. So she's going to be on MTV saying MTV totally, um, made this all up. Yes, and it wouldn't be okay. the first time because um, famously in the f- series finale of The Hills, they have this scene where Brody Jenner and Kristen Cavallari are saying goodbye to one another because sh- one of them is moving somewhere. Um, and the camera pulls back and you see that they're on a set, like a mm. studio set with like the Hollywood sign yeah. in the background. And that was like the wink at the audience. Mm-hmm. Like, was this real or was it not real? Um, I I look... I would Are you going to watch it? Obviously. Yeah. I think you should watch no, the series God, finale. No, I've got too much other stuff to watch. Oh, uh, she whines. She makes. <laughs> All right. Um, also, in ratings news, last night, uh, which was Tuesday night, mm-hmm. Roots opened strong with 5.3 million viewers, uh, according to TV Line. This was representing the number one scripted mini premiere on cable since 2013, uh, which was A&E's Bonnie and Clyde. And Aaron mm. did not watch it. You are not among those people. I will not be watching Roots. I watch. I already have The Underground on my DVR, and as an African American, mm-hmm. there are only so many slave related uh, shows that I need mm-hmm. to watch. Well, I watched the first two hours, which I liked, but still felt like it was four hours. Um, <laughs> I had never seen the original. Had you seen the original? Yes, but a long okay. time ago. I'd never seen the original. I was a little bit too young for it, which means you were really too young for it. Yes, probably. Um, and I thought it was very well done. Um, it's it's just, it feels really long, and it's so hard to watch at, at yeah. times. Um, I mean, obviously, this is what happened, and it should be hard to watch, but it's hard to watch. Right. And I think, as I mean, I really think you only need to watch that kind of thing a couple times in mm-hmm. your life to, to really get it. Yeah. Yep, got it. Moving on. Did you watch 12 Years a Slave? 
I did. Yeah. And I also watched Django Unchained. I watched Django Unchained. I did not watch 12 Years a Slave. I thought 12 Years a Slave was fine mm-hmm. as a movie. It was okay. Mm-hmm. Um, still hard to watch, but, you know, what else? Also in reading news, this week, and we're going to talk about some summer shows, uh, So You Think You Can Dance premiered on Monday night. Yeah, with doing a kid version of it. Next Generation. Oh, I hate like the Star kid Trek. versions of it. Oh. You know what? I completely agree with you because oh. here's the problem with kid, kid versions of competition reality mm-hmm. shows. The kids are always going to be cute, and they're, they're always never going to get real and you, critique. And you know they're never going to get real, real critique, and you know they are so incredibly coached because the only kids show I ever watch um, is usually um, the kid version of the cooking shows because my oh, husband yeah. really likes them, mm-hmm. and they're just so they're just so coached. Like everything that comes out of their mouths and the way they say it, you know, they've been in acting school, and right. I just find it so incredibly, incredibly disingenuous. I agree, and I, I and I do like so you think you can dance a lot. I like so you think you can dance, too. Um, but I'm just not interested in this at all well it premiered to 3.7 million total viewers which is not that great not, i mean even for terrible. a summer show i mean so you think it's, dance has never been the powerhouse ratings that the other shows have been it's down from uh last season's finale yeah. uh, also premiering on monday night was mistresses a show <laughs> where no one is a mistress by the way uh and that premiered with to 3.1 million viewers and of course, the night was won by. In, in, I'm sorry, in Devious Maids, which I always confuse with mistresses, are they what? actually maids? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. They were, making sure. <laughs> in mistresses, in like the first season, maybe one of them was. A mistress. I honestly, I don't know the difference between these two shows. Okay, one is a bunch of maids, and it's more of a telenovela. Uh huh. Whereas mistresses is just a really terribly wit- written drama. Okay. About three friends who find who themselves. Stars in it. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> No real stars. Okay. It initially started Alyssa Milano, starred Alyssa Milano, Mm -hmm. and then she left because the show moved to Canada where it's cheaper to film Mm -hmm. and her family was based in L.A. and she didn't want to move. So I would say she was a star. Here's for me where the show jumped the shark. Now we're in like season four here. (laughs) Um, Alyssa Milano was married to this really hot Australian guy on the show. They got divorced because she cheated on him with her coworker. By the way, still doesn't make her a mistress. Didn't understand that at all. <laughs> Cheated on him with her coworker. Well, it's like housewives. None of right, none of them are actually housewives. housewives. And now, after Alyssa Milano left the show, her sister on the show is dating her ex-husband. That, for me, was... It the, feels very Melrose placey. It feels very, that would not happen. Mm. And it's unacceptable. <laughs> and they want, and like the, the creators and writers of the show want us to be in love with these two people as a couple. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I cannot get behind someone sleeping with their sister's ex-husband. I can't. Don't knock it till you tried it. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's life advice from Vicki Hyman. All right, let's talk about Game of Thrones. De- 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 oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it, it was not my favorite episode, um, okay. especially coming off the emotional onslaught that was The Door. Yes. Um, but... I liked a couple of things about it. I thought one of the most interesting things, obviously, is the return of Benjamin Stark, which has been, you know, everybody kind of, I don't know, I always assume we we're going to see him again because mm-hmm. you don't just, like, wander off into the north and then that's it. Well, again, if you don't see them die. Yes, you don't see them. But even if you see them die, that's they're not true. always dead. <laughs> Good um, point. So Benjamin Stark comes back and we find out he's been, like, sort of a secret agent man for the Three-Eyed Raven in the north after... He was attacked by the White Walkers, but was resurrected by the Children of the Forest with some dragon glass. What I actually found the most interesting thing was that Bran was getting this intense download of Westerosi history. And among the things that he saw, a lot of stuff that we'd seen before, Mm -hmm. Rob Stark getting killed, Ned Stark getting beheaded, blah, 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 was the Mad King, King Eris, we've never seen him before, screaming from his throne, burn them all during the siege of King's Landing. Why do you think they thought that was the most important thing they had to put into that flashback. I don't know. Because I have a theory. Why don't you tell us? So I was, I, I thought it was very interesting. It also showed a lot of wildfire, which of course makes me speculate that wildfire will be very important in defeating the White Walkers. But I didn't really think about why they showed that particular scene with King Aerys until the very end. When Daenerys Targaryen is leading the Dothraki back to Marine, and everybody seems to be on board, everything's fine, she sort of senses something, she rides off, she comes back a top Drogon, and gives this very fiery speech to the Dothraki, who really didn't need to hear it. But it was a very... It was, 
first of all, it was basically the speech that Cal Drogo gave to um, his blood riders when Daenerys was almost assassinated. He said, I'm going to give her the throne. We're going to rape all the Restorosi women. We're going to burn their stone houses. We're going to kill all the men in, 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 the, in their tin uniforms, whatever. Mm-hmm. And she basically gives the same speech, but it just sounds really horrible coming from her and very bloodthirsty and very vengeance-oriented. Mm-hmm. And it made me think, this is not the Daenerys that I know, really. See, I... Vicky, have you ever played a sport? Have you ever been on a team? Look at me. Do you think I've ever played a sport? <laughs> I have never played a sport in my life. So, see, I felt like it was the coach, like, getting the team riled up. And but like, why at why that not? moment? Why? Yeah, they when were you're on a team. Her. But, yeah, but when you're it. on a team, you're also Save on it. the team. Save it for when you need it. I mean, no, that that's was, when you need it. Mm. You need it before the game starts. you got to get them They're pumped. not even close, but they're going to go back to Marine. It's not like they have a battle yeah, at but Marine. Yeah, but now they're, they're marching with purpose. Oh, they're not just following behind. So he, like, they feel invested in the journey. <laughs> well, the, the theory, of course, is that Daenerys will end up being some sort of villain in the last couple of seasons. I can't believe that. You don't believe it. You know I it's don't a theory, believe it though. at all. Uh, yeah, look, many theories. That one I cannot get behind. I don't think they would take one of the only characters who's, who is 100% good and turn them into a villain because then you we'd watch, only you have john snow did you watch buffy yes okay remember remember evil willow yes but it wasn't actual willow it actually was actual willow she yeah. got super angry when you know when somebody tara when died. tara died and yeah. then she became evil willow and i'm just saying like you know she didn't end up being evil willow throughout the rest of the show right. but i thought it was very interesting to make one of the core characters a bad person i'm not saying that daenerys is going to end up being the villain she's going to be villainous all throughout but mm-hmm. i think we are seeing a different part of her personality and you know how she i mean she's had a lot of failures in leadership you know right. i mean and maybe she's going to try this out for a while but it sounded kind of scary and bloodthirsty and she's going to go back to westerosi and lay waste and that's not what she's supposed to do she's supposed to unite the kingdoms right well anyway we'll see and did you did you find anything else particularly interesting about this game of thrones episode um thank goodness that aria is done with this faceless man <sighs> crap Although, it, ish, did she get her face-changing license? That's what I want to know. No, I, mean, I think so, she but failed then, the but test. Then, but then, what is the point of her being at the faceless man's school For if not so to long. learn how to change her face, which would give her like a really good skill when she goes back to Westeros and kicks butt? But I think what she realized was that she's not a faceless person, that she is Arya Stark, that she is inherently yes. good, and that you know she has her list, fine, she'll kill some people. But <laughs> she can't. It. <laughs> she, they deserve it. She can't just kill some rando woman who's starring in a play and not know why. Like I, she I, needs a good reason. I absolutely agree with that. I liked the. Um, I liked the scene with her and the actress. I didn't need the play again, though. I don't know why these plays have been so long. Was it a different? It was a it different was, part. It was. Right? It was. But it's not like. I mean, I thought the first one was a little bit interesting in that. Arya was seeing the scene that she had actually seen in real life, and she hadn't seen the Joffrey stuff. But right. it's like, I'm sure she'd heard about it if there's already a play about it. Right. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, travels yeah, fast. It, it, it seemed a little long. I was also wondering, you know, you notice that Richard E. Grant played the, um, um, who's a fairly well-known actor, played the role of the, guy, the theatrical troupe leader. And he had, like, a little role, and I'm wondering, is she going to get back to Westeros as part of a theatrical troupe? Is, mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot. Of, there, they spent a lot of time with these people. They do spend a lot. But that's what Game of Thrones does. They spend a lot of time on a mm-hmm. lot of things that okay. they can just keep moving on from, like, all mm-hmm. of Daenerys's uh, marine scenes. Mm-hmm. Well, um, moving forward, the one, yeah. thing I, one thing I am very excited about is um, we have Bran headed um, south to River Run. We have Jamie headed north to River Run. Mm-hmm. And I'd kind of given up on Jamie and Brienne and I was all for Brienne and Tormund quite frankly yes. um, but I think it's interesting they're gonna they're gonna have a reunion and that's oh, yeah, something I'm are. very interested Ugh. in seeing speaking of reunions the scene between Cersei and Jamie where they were making out it look it <laughs> never fails to Gross disturb me it's so dis- <laughs> disgusting yeah I mean like I was watching it and I'm like oh yeah they're brother and sister right Ugh. right yeah. And I think the longer the show goes on, like, the worse it gets. Well, the funny thing is, is that there was a point where I kind of thought they had broken up and they were like, not, like, when he went off to Dorne, mm-hmm. and I remember him looking, they were passing by um, Tarth, which is Brienne's um, ancestral homeland, and right. he was looking at it with it, and I'm like, oh, there's some hope for Brienne and, and Jamie, and maybe he's, like, finally realized, like, what an evil, horrible person his sister is. Right. And that was going to be well, it, but no. Does Brienne <laughs> know that they're 
together. How could she not? Everybody right, else everybody knows. Everybody else knows. You're right. <laughs> everybody else knows. Um, oh, and then we also, we can't leave out the scene where Tommen. Uh, oh, that was weird. Like, decided to partner with the, what's the, the High, High Sparrow. Sparrow. And Marjorie, and Marjorie who, um, the last we'd seen her, was basically vowing that she was never going to, she was going to, she was basically going to come up on top. Right. And then now she seems to be under the spell of the High Sparrow, right. but I do not believe it for one You don't second. believe it? No, oh, I, I absolutely do it. not believe it. Okay. No. And Marjorie is a very good actress. Mm. I mean, I'm not saying Natalie Dormer's a good right, actress. Right. I'm no, saying no, Marjorie. Marjorie is a very right, good actress. Right, right, right. So I don't believe it. And I was actually pretty disappointed because I was hoping on seeing some, you know, sparrows getting shot down. I loved it when <laughs> Jamie when Jamie rode his horse up the steps. I think that was my favorite moment. That was your favorite moment of the whole episode. <laughs> I didn't know horses could do that. Well, I had no idea. Fancy feet. All right. So that's our Game of Thrones recap. We'll be watching it. Uh, you know what I love about Game of Thrones randomly? Mm-hmm. Is that they aired... On holidays, like they don't care. Oh, I know. I went it's out. The to, best. I went out to dinner on on Sunday night, and I had a nice dinner in the city and everything. And I came back, and I you know turned on the TV. I was like, "Oh, Game of Thrones was yes. on." Yes, I love it. They don't the HBO. They don't take no stinking yeah. breaks. Um, and one day we will talk about Veep because I think Veep is having a really good. <laughs> Veep season. always has. I mean, I've seen Veep always has. It's just. Always operating and at a very high level. Right. Very rarely stumbles. I am enjoying, though. I'm sorry. Silicon Valley. I'm totally uh, back in it. I have never, Silicon I've, Valley. I've never watched Silicon Valley. I mean, I did watch the one horse scene from a few weeks ago, but <laughs> oh otherwise, I never watched it. All right. Moving on. So we're at the, the we're really at the end of the the tv yes. season i mean there are only a hand not even a handful of shows that haven't aired their season finales at this point um but i want to talk a little bit about some of my favorite and least favorite season finales uh from this past season and one of them will be the catch because i can actually talk about yes that too. so you watched i did it. i did all right well let's talk about that first okay so you know how i have felt about the catch all season long i'm like oh the show it's it's all right and it kind of jumped the shark when the brother came along and he started murdering mm-hmm. people and i was like what is what is going on but then i thought in the season finale it really turned it around mm-hmm. like it became a show that i that was fu- it went back to what it was in the pilot which was fun mm-hmm. and and interesting, and the characters were all likable, and they made decisions that you wanted them to. <laughs> mm. Predictability. Um, what did you think about the finale? Well, I have always liked the show, even though I kind of got, um, kind of, I kind of dropped it for a little while. Mm. Um, but and I, I sometimes I wonder whether I like this show just in a complete reaction to everything that I hate about the other Shonda shows, which okay. is that they're they're ridiculously unbelievable yet take themselves so seriously. And this one does not take itself so seriously. But it is a little unbelievable. Oh, yes. But okay. it doesn't take itself so seriously. Right. So it's like, uh, it's like they don't really expect me to believe this stuff is happening. You know, I, I love, I love the costumes. I love, mm-hmm. you know, she does, this, uh, like, uh, Marie Ennis does this, uh, Ennis? Ennis. Ennis. Whatever. Ennis? That lady from The Killing. <laughs> yes. Does the 60s really well, except she still wears too much eyeliner and she cannot hold her eyes open. Yes. Um, you know, they're just, it's just delightful. So in the season finale, <laughs> basically what happens is, is, well, the premise of the show is that Maria Noose and, uh, and, it does uh, not sound right. It doesn't, and Noose? And Noose. Ennis? Ennis? I don't know. I don't know. The lady from The Killing. Yeah. <laughs> Marie, <laughs> uh, was dating, uh, Peter Krause. And uh, Alice. Her name is Alice in the show. Thank Let's you. Let's call her Alice. What's his name? Ben? Um, well, now it's Ben, but it used ben. to be Christopher. Right. It's very confusing. Yes. In the beginning, Christopher and Alice were dating, or they were engaged, and then one day she wakes up and he's gone and realizes that he's a big he's he's the big bad that she's been chasing. She's a, a private eye. And um, so once she finds him again, it turns out that, you know, his life as a thief is not really that great and he doesn't really like it. And he did love her and they kind of hook back up. Um, kind of. They do. They, they hook it, They hook up do. again. And she's still a PI now working with the FBI. Or Interpol or, or it, somebody. Some, some rando. Agent Dow. Like one agent. <laughs> yeah. um, and he's still a thief. So that's like the whole. Um, but he's but he but he is working with a um, uh, criminal enterprise right. that does kill a lot of people and is led by Mrs. Patmore from Downton Abbey, yes. which I love, and her two kids and her two kids. One of them is that doctor from ER. That's how I always remember that. Is woman. that Sonia Walger? Yes. Okay. Wasn't she the doctor in ER? I don't remember. I remember her as the mind of the married man, which well, was like the I'm worst show to, of the 1990s. I'm going to have to Google it because she's yeah. been on a lot of shows. She's been on a lot of shows. Oh, she was Penny from um, um, Penny and Desmond. 
That's what everybody remembers her from. Oh, from Lost. She's right. Right. Yes. No. She, maybe she wasn't. And by either. the way, I'm watching the one. I'm still watching the 100. Finished the first season, and I cannot think of um, Henry E. and Cusack as anything but Desmond. Agreed. He's just always Desmond. No, she was never on ER, but she was on Lost. So thank you. Yes. That that is what that was. Sorry. Um, and so when we get to the end of the season, now you find out that. What was his name again? Christopher? His name is Ben. What was his name before? Christopher. Okay, that Christopher, his real name is Ben. And Thank then he <laughs> and that he's actually <laughs> working. He's actually also working with Agent Dow, the random agent, and um to bring down this criminal you know, enterprise. Criminal em- enterprise and run by Mrs. Patmore. V- correct. And they kind of do at the end, and then he and Alice are supposed to run away, but in the meantime, Alice has been arrested by the FBI for this painting, the stolen painting she had in her house. That Ben, that had ben her. gave her, it, well, he stole it and then mm-hmm. put it in her house as a gift. And she could, she could never figure out a way to return this thing. Which is ridiculous. Which is ridiculous. That was like one of my pet peeves of the season. Like, just go, you're a PI. Say mm-hmm. you found it and return it. Anyway, um, and so she goes and they're going to arrest her and you think that's how the season will end. And then Ben. Which would have been fine. Which would have been fine. Ben shows up and says, don't arrest her. It was me. I stole the painting. And that's how the season ends. Mm-hmm. It sounds like more terrible than like it actually no, was. I, I thought, thought it was, was good. It was good. And I think it sets up season two mm-hmm. pretty well. It does. I mean, like the the the, the point that they kept on uh, hitting us over the head with in the last couple of episodes was, can she really trust him? Right. So is he just in it for the con? Does he just want to, you know? Uh, and so by coming forward and saying, right. you know, it was me, arrest me. There you go. Although he could have like another con he in his could mind. Have, but I do believe they love each other. I do believe they love each other too. And I don't think he's conning her anymore. But I will say that I thought it was a weird twist at the end where the brother who's in the criminal enterprise, this man who showed up and just like started killing people. Yes, he killed a lot of people. All of a sudden turned over a new leaf and was like on Alice's side. Yeah. He actually kidnapped her like two episodes ago. He kidnapped her and then made her dress up and like put on like, it was, it was that weird. was weird. <laughs> His storyline, <laughs> the brother's storyline is what kind of turned me off from the show. Mm-hmm. I was just like, I don't get it. Um, but then at the end, you know, they changed it up. So we'll okay. see how so that, that will go see you. Catch. Two. Excited about Catch. Excited, what else excited did you, about the Catch. What else did you finish watching? Well, you guys. Because I didn't finish watching anything this season. Really? I mean, you know, there are, I mean, as far as like scripted dramas mm-hmm. and scripted comedies, there are, there's so much TV I have to keep up with that I, I, I don't think there's any show this season except for The Catch that I managed to watch from beginning to end. Did you finish Modern Family or Blackish? I have those on my DVR. I think my I'm D- only one episode behind on Modern Family. I think my DVR ate the season finales of both of those shows because I have yeah. not seen them because I know that the season finale of Blackish was a play on Good Times and I have not seen yes, that. Yes, yes. So I think my DVR was well, abc.com too. Oh, yes, I know. I will go. My DVR has been eating a lot of shows lately. Like I've watched I've missed Sister Wives. Oh my god. I mean, multiple times. I mean, there are shows out there that I love. I just cannot get it together to watch them. It is hard. And yet I did watch a whole season of The 100. (laughs) I don't know how I did that. Wow. Well, you know, I hated the season series finale of The Good Wife. I hated the series finale of Castle, Mm -hmm. which were two that I actually Did you watch Nashville? No. I gave up on Nashville at the beginning of last season. Yeah, I gave it up, I think, end of the second season. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. the second season, it was just piling up on DVR, and I was like, "Do I really want to watch twenty six hours of Nashville?" It's another one of the shows that my husband watches, and I will wander in, and I'm like, "Okay, now who's with who now?" Because right. there is so much partner swapping on that show. Yes, there is a lot of partner swapping, and most pe- most of the characters I don't really care for. Yeah. So I stopped watching it. I do think I watched the season finale of Hawaii Five O. Oh my god, <laughs> I love that. Look, love Hawaii okay. Five O. Um, and Shark Tank. Okay. Vicky is so <laughs> not there for any of this. And I, of course, I watched the season's finale, season finales of Grey's Anatomy, mm-hmm. Scandal. They were both fine. Mm-hmm. Scandal was a little, oh, whatever. I'm over, you know, I'm over Scandal. I yes. just watch it because I'm, I'm extremely loyal. Um, How many more seasons do you think it's got in? I'm, I'm guessing one more season, that's it. Next season, yeah, when it comes back mid season, yeah. well, okay, maybe a season, yeah, I think maybe, but I mean, it is, a, it's, I think it's on its last legs. I, I hope they shoot it and it dies. Oh, good, yeah, <laughs> just put it down, it's not, it's not working. All right, well, let's stop looking at the past and look toward the future. Uh, we're now in the summer, summer season, and there are a lot of summer shows 
premiering this week and in the coming weeks. And Vicky, you had a post on NJ.com about many of them. Did you know? 20 not? shows, returning and new, that you should check out. Yes, and we're just going to go through Vicky's Oh my goodness, list we're going to go through all of them? Well, some of them. Okay, well, so, some of them we've already covered. Roots. Yeah, so we touched on Roots a little bit. That premiered on May 30th, mm-hmm. and it is, what, five nights? I think it's More four nights. Five, four nights. Yes, Vicky can do math and I cannot. It ends on June 2nd. <laughs> That's tomorrow. Um, and it's basically a, a retelling of the <laughs> 1977 show. Mm-hmm. But, uh, which but, was also a miniseries. But um, more historically accurate because right. from what I read is yes. that the original show, because they didn't want to like upset the white folks too much, they made a lot of the white characters <laughs> sympathetic. Um, more sympathetic. Correct. They are um, not very sympathetic at this. So you can retelling. catch that on the History Channel Lifetime and A&E mm-hmm. uh, and let us know what you think. America's Got Talent. Let's move on. Okay. Oh, oh. But now it stars Simon Cowell. Okay. I, I, it's, yeah, no. All right, all right. All I know is that la- oh, this was on on uh, last night yeah. at 8, and for some reason my TV got, uh, it, it landed on NBC, and the, what I saw was some guy taking a hook out of his nose or something, and everyone in the audience cringing, and then Simon Cowell giving him a standing ovation. <laughs> like, that was <laughs> like the three minutes of the show I saw, where everyone's cringing, no one is, can look at this guy pulling a hook out of his nose, and Simon Cowell standing up clapping I, it was amusing all right uh outcast which is a cinemax show premieres june 3rd at 10 p.m what's this about vicky um it is based on a robert kirkman novel about a guy whose family is plagued by demonic possession and it happens to star patrick fugit fugit, fugit. i don't know how to say his name it's, I think um it's who i just always love from almost famous and i've liked him in a lot of other things including he was very good in gone girl um, I'm very Wait, interested in this. In Gone Girl? He played um, uh, Kim Dickens' uh, um, police assistant. Oh, guy. okay. Small role, but I just love him and everything he's in. Yeah. I'm interested in this one. It's going to be probably bloody and gross and disturbing. So I will not be watching. You will not be watching it, although you liked Walking Dead. Um, I think if I have to choose between comic books turned into disturbing um, things, I'm probably going to watch this one instead of Preacher. Okay. Because Preacher was, I wasn't, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Vicky says Anne. All right, Feed the Beast, which is on AMC. It stars uh, Jim Sturgis and David Schwimmer. Two best friends trying to open up a restaurant in the Bronx, but Jim Sturgis is a coke addict or former coke addict who is in hock to the mob, so it's very difficult for them to get this off the ground without a lot of criminal enterprising going on. I'm out. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, June 5th at 10 if you want to check that out. Uh, then we have uh, Ooh, our favorite, one of our favorites, Unreal returns to Lifetime on June sixth at ten. So we know first season. Uh, what's what's the name of the show within the show? Everlasting. Everlasting uh, ended with they were at the altar and then uh, Shelby. Shelby. Yeah, <laughs> Shelby <laughs> ran out. It's How not great? Shelby? Is it not Shelby? It's Shelby from Quantico. Oh, she, <laughs> she's not Shelby on this show. <laughs> but Shelby from Quantico um, leaves <laughs> leaves Freddie Stroma, who I don't know if you noticed. They're engaged. Fre- Do you know who Freddie Stroma oh. played in Game of Thrones on Sunday night? He, he was in Game of Thrones. He he played Dickon, the Randall Tarley's son, the 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 uh, Sam's over, older brother at the family dinner. That was Freddie Stroma. Oh, really? Yes, in a bad way. Oh well, Fre- anyway. Freddie Stroma and the actress that plays Shelby on Quantico are engaged. So that there will nice. be a real wedding Good for them. It did not happen on last season of Unreal, um, but now they're on season two or whatever. You know their next enterprise is. And what are the ca- main characters' names again? Oh, um, Quinn and Rachel. Quinn and Rachel are and producing a show like The Bachelor with a black with a black bachelor. bachelor. So it's going to be a lot more um, racism satire. I love it going and on here. <laughs> it should be really fun. If you're easily offended, you may not love it. I thought the trailer was hysterical, mm-hmm. um, and I can't wait for it to return. I will say that Unreal has changed the way that I watch shows like The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. Really? In what way? Because I mean, now... you surely knew all the stuff was going on behind the correct, scenes. Correct, but I just think the way that producers can egg on a situation or, like, manu... Like, they are really manufacturing yes. things on the show. I mean, show. to the point that they swapped out a woman's bipolar medication to committing suicide. Correct. Yes. And I'm just like, what that does that really happen? It, I'm I'm sure they're elevating it, you know, a few levels, but I can believe that that would go yeah. down. Oh, can I can I make a little a little quick 
a stop point. You know what? I yeah. had to watch the first two episodes of The Bachelorette because we had oh, a Jersey no, guy. Did we though? Oh my god! It's like oh, it's so bad. It, but it's it's really kind of funny. Wa- I mean, I was I was watching it and I was thinking, wow, these guys know that the audience for this is women because they would never act like this in real life. Oh. Because I mean, it's ridiculous. And, I, and they have this villain named Ch- Chad, somebody who's basically not mocking watching. them for. Oh, you're not watching it? No. I'm watching uh, you know why? this and you are not? I'll tell you why I'm not watching it. Because I don't like JoJo and why, so I don't care. Oh, my God. I, it, she was, I can't believe they chose her to be ba- the Bachelorette. Well, I'm not watching any more of it because now my New Jersey guy. He's gone. Will Haddock is gone. But wait, you don't think these guys act like that in real life? No. Wait, what? act like what? Um, Mooney, Lovestruck. Oh, I'm okay. going to write you a song and I've already no, decided okay. I love you, want to marry you and have seven children. Here's where I'm going to disagree with you. Men really like act like this in real life? No, no, no. These men act like this in real life. That's why they're single and they're on The Bachelorette. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, I think so. I think that the people that go on these shows, because they're all very attractive people. And you're trying to tell me that in the real world, these very attractive 20-somethings can't get a date? They can't find a boy? I think they can get a date. I think they want to be reality show stars. Okay. I can get with that, too. But yes. I also think that most of them are a little crazy. And that's yes, why they're single. Yes, yes. I agree there, too. All right. Uh, <laughs> next up, we have O. OJ, Made in America. Which we've talked about. We've talked about. It's supposed to be amazing. Yes. Vicky said she's not watching it because she's... No. I thought you weren't going to watch it. Well, no. I was like, when I first heard about it, I was like, ah. But then I've heard... All I've heard is really incredible things about about this documentary. So So it's an eight-hour documentary, and it's airing over four nights on ABC June 11th, my birthday, uh, through June 17th with replays on ESPN. I think it's going to be awesome. I can't wait. I love documentaries. I love them more than reality shows. Um, and so any documentary that gets a good review will be watched by me. You know what documentary? I'm really off topic because it's not on TV. I'm really looking forward to seeing Wiener. Oh, the yeah. The Anthony Wiener documentary. Yeah. I've only heard good things. And Anthony Wiener is a total crackpot, so I cannot wait. Well, I mean, he's a total crackpot. I'm, like, fascinated by Huma. I mean... Me too. I, I don't... I just, I can't understand what is going on oh, in that marriage. Because Huma is the good wife. Yes, she is. Yes. Yes. But, I mean, she's actually living and loving with her husband as opposed to in the actual good wife well, where but from, weren't. But from what I hear in the documentary, there are some scenes where she clearly looks uncomfortable where she's like, what is this crap that I'm yeah. in? So I Seriously, think, Huma, what is this crap that you're I in? I bet you Huma's more like Alicia Florrick than we think. Then she needs to leave Anthony Weiner. Well, see what happened with <laughs> Alicia. She stayed by the side till the end and then missed out on Jason, but I'm not bitter. All right. Uh, we have The Ride with Norman Reedus on AMC. Norman Reedus plays Daryl uh, Dixon Darryl on, on, the on The Walking Dead. Dead. Biker culture. Yeah. No I one, think people, uh, some people like it. All right, sure. Yeah. June 12th, 10 p.m. if you're interested. Uh, oh, this looks oh. so bad. All right, there's. Let me just read what Vicky wrote in her her piece here. Veep meets Invasion of the Body Snatchers in Brain Dead, the bizarre summer offering from the Good Wife creators. I mean, if that right there doesn't tell you, well, how- that was me characterizing it. It wasn't them characterizing it. No, but I know, but that is what it is. Yes. I watched the trailer. <laughs> um, let's see. This comic thriller is about a young ca- Capitol Hill staffer who discovers that aliens are taking over the brains of Congress. What? It's as good an explanation as any. It's... Yeah, it's... it's I, I, I don't even know. It's silly. It's silly and not in a way that would probably make me want to keep watching, like, Guilty Pressure silly. Right. Like, and I think... Like, like, something like Zoo. Like, CBS put on Zoo last year. Wait. I know you like Zoo. I do. I, you know, I thought it was, like, you know... Silly, ridiculous, fun, good for the summer. This one just sounds silly and ridiculous. What I dislike most about it is I feel like there's some social commentary going on here about how our legislators are, you know, But Veep is doing it so much better. I mean, yeah. (laughs) Yes. Watch Veep instead. But if you want to watch Brain Dead, uh, June 13th at 10 p.m. on CBS. Uh, To Tell the Truth is a remake should we say a, a revival, a revival. And I, I mentioned that like abc is on abc right ABC? abc is on a kick of taking these classic tv shows and game shows game i'm sorry game shows and rebooting them there's going to be match game with alec baldwin um to tell the truth is with anthony anderson and his mother as the scorekeeper yes. yes so it looks good all right um we're gonna breeze through some of these animal kingdom on tnt starting ellen uh, barkin as the matriarch of a Southern California crime family. 
Sons, if you miss yeah. Sons of Anarchy, yeah, you might watch like that. This. June 14th, 9 p.m. Uh, Orange is New Black is coming back. We know that's going to be good. And darker than ever. It looks very dark it this looks, season. But it looks, I like the yeah. fact that they're infusing Litchfield with new prisoners. Mm-hmm. Um, Green Leaf, which is an Oprah production. It will be on OWN. Oprah is in it. It stars Lynn Whitfield and Keith David and Merle Dandridge. I'm sorry, is Oprah in it? Yeah, okay. she's in the trailer. <laughs> sorry, I must oh, have missed that. Didn't watch it. I'm interested because I think uh, a mega church is a very interesting place to set a series. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm not interested. <laughs> Moving on. Oh, wait. If you want to watch that, June 21st, 10 p.m. Um, American Gothic, CBS, June 22nd, 10 p.m. It's about a blue blood Boston family who realizes their late patriarch may have been a notorious serial killer. And may have had help from somebody who is still alive in the family. Yes. Hmm. It sounds interesting. It sounds interesting. It is an event series. I hope it stays an event series. Um, These sorts of things are much better if you just wrap it up in the end. I agree. And you know something that I think would have been great had it been wrapped up? Mr. Robot. But it Mm. comes back for season two on July 13th on USA. I'm into it. I'll watch it. But eh, we'll see. Um, also on tap, we have Dead of Summer on Freeform. Yeah, I, I threw that one in there. It's uh, it's an anthology series, which I'm interested in. And Freeform, which we have to keep saying, is ABC Family. Yes. I don't know why they rebanded itself, because we have to keep saying what is free. It's ABC Family. Right. And it's set, it's, these are all going to be set at summer camps. This is set in the 80s? The uh, 90s? It doesn't specify. It is. It oh, is 80s. 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 Um, and it's a summer slasher Film anthology. Sure. For the kids. For the kids. Okay. Uh, Returning July 10th at 8 p.m. is a a favorite. (laughs) Real Housewives of New Jersey. We talked about that a lot last week. Um, And I'm sure when it's back on, we'll be talking about it every 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 single week. week. (laughs) Maybe we'll have a separate podcast about it. And maybe we, I think we will. (laughs) And we'll probably do some Facebook Live videos and some other things. So Mm. follow us on social media. Uh, the Night Of is an eight-part miniseries on HBO. This was the show that was championed by James Gandolfini before he died. Uh, and it follows the uh, police investigation of a brutal murder in New York City, the legal proceedings surrounding it, the criminal justice system, and life inside the purgatory of Rikers Island. Vicki, you said you were in- excited about this one. Did I? I don't know. No, I mean, it's, um, it, it, is, it is one of those prestige miniseries. Um, I'm sure it's going to be very good. I haven't, I haven't seen enough of it to get excited about it about it yet what's the one that i was trying to watch make me a hero did you watch that oh i love me uh, yeah i thought it was very good um, I, what i liked it was only it was only like it was like four episodes five yeah episodes. i think I only got two in but i yeah, did like it it's so, very well done so we'll see uh that premieres july 10th ballers returns for season ballers. two cannot wait <laughs> july 17th vice principles is a comedy on hbo it's paired with ballers and it's in the space of that horrible 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 geopolitical comedy alleged comedy starring tim robbins and jack black was in last season i hope this one is better um two vice principals vying to become principal somebody else is hired so they band together to take down that principal so they continue to fight for the job okay uh and finally we have the get down on netflix premiering august 12th and this uh has an interesting pairing does it not vicky as far as the creators Oh, yes. Um, Sean Ryan from The Shield and Baz Luhrmann from Moulin Rouge and Romeo plus Juliet and um, <laughs> assorted other shows. I am. This is probably the show I'm most excited about this summer. So what is it? Um, it is actually similar to Vinyl, mm. except without the all the white people. Uh, <laughs> it's Vinyl with black people, which is um, what I thought when I watched yes. the trailer. <laughs> um, it is about the birth of disco and hip hop and punk in New York City in a broken down, bankrupt New York City in the 1970s. Um, it's also a coming of age story, it seems. It stars a lot of newcomers, plus Giancarlo Esposito um, and and Jimmy Smith's. The music looks amazing. The costumes look great. The cinematography looks awesome. I will say in watching the trailer, the first minute I wasn't into it, and then when it got mm. to the end when the young woman started was singing, singing and oh. then the other kids started yes. rapping, and I was like, all right, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm You're back on in. board. I'm on board. All right, so that will do it for our summer shows. Now, quickly, before we wrap up this week, we want to talk about the season two premiere of Wayward Pines. Yes, it made me think we didn't need a season two premiere. I com- I completely agree I didn't, with you. I didn't hate it, 
but it did not grab me the way the show grabbed me last season at all. It missed, like, what was missing? Like, it wasn't the charm, because there was no real, it was no charm. It was but the mystery. It was it's like, you mystery. already know what's going on there. And, like, not right. only was it, you don't know what's going on in Wayward Pines, they, they kept on giving you little details that made you, like, even wonder what kind of genre you were watching. And now it's right. kind of already set up, and Jason Patrick seems to be in very much the same mold as Matt Dillon, which is kind of boring. Mm-hmm. I will say that the one standout moment was Carla Gugino, who oh, was the goodness. leader of the Resistance last season. She is somehow unfrozen or something. I, I don't know what happened right. in, in, in this episode. And she basically, she ends up killing herself by slashing her own throat in a move that made me go, <gasps> and cover me my too. mouth, which doesn't and not happen only very often. She slash her own throat but she did it while she was like straddled on top of uh who is the woman oh yes I, oh I the remember. blonde woman uh <laughs> whatever her name is <laughs> my bad sorry oh, hope, davis. hope davis hope davis yes you thought like in the moment that she was gonna kill hope davis mm-hmm. and then she slits her own throat and mm-hmm. there's blood and it's like well um i will i completely agree with you Vic- vicky i don't know what the mystery is unless they plan on Doing flashbacks and showing us what has happened over the past three years. Yes, we've discussed. We've also discussed that they had some intriguing moment last season where they had footage of a guy like in San Francisco. Right. I, you know, you all know I love world building. I love seeing what's going on and how the world works. And they are going to be talking a lot. There are we're going to be seeing more about the Abbeys and uh, who they are. I, I know you're not excited I'm not about into that. The Abbeys. I'm going to keep watching this. Me too. I'm going to keep watching. It's on tonight. Right. It is on Wednesday nights on Fox. On Fox. No. So we'll we'll see maybe see uh, episode two will change our minds and we have not seen Jaime and Hansu yet. No, we have not. And he's on the season. We did see Terrence Howard, which I was like, oh, that's unnecessary. <laughs> All right. That's going to do it for this episode of TV Hangover. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at TV Hangover Show. If you have any topics you want us to discuss, let us know. Uh, and subscri- subscribe and review us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and any other platform where you can listen to podcasts. 